Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Good. Wow, that was a great uh, presentation you got from Todd. I'm going to stand in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, and tell you I am not a trader. Okay? But he made a comment that was absolutely critical. You have to have a long-term opinion. You will trade differently in a bull market than you will in a bear market. That's the message he was giving you. Uh, the last time I saw Kim was at the Money Show in Dallas. That was, I think, October 2nd, 3rd, something like that. And I get up and I told the audience that I am a secular bull that's spelled with an S, means it's going to last maybe a decade or more. And I have been for years. And I said to them, my target for the Dow, maybe I'll get it up to a new high around 28,000, 28,500, something like that. And I said uh, to the audience, don't be surprised if you get a 10% correction one of these fine days. And I sat down and I listened to all these other wonderful, wonderful presentations. And they basically were saying the same thing I was saying. So when I was on the plane going back home, I was saying, gosh, I really hate being part of a consensus. <laughs> no, and it's no put down, because we were all basically optimistic, and, we, and that was the opinion to have all year, and, and it held, it, it worked. And I am not surprised, ladies and gentlemen, that we had the correction in, in October. That's the good news. Now here's where Todd and I will have a, a little bit of a view of life a little differently. These eyes have been looking at charts for 51 years. I gotta tell you folks, that was one nasty decline we had. There was an awful lot of technical damage done. And I was on a, a talk show the other day, about three weeks ago, CNBC, I was on the phone, and then someone picked up an article and they said, Ralph Akampora says this market looks like the crash of 87. I didn't mean it to come out that way. But what I was trying to tell the audience, now you gotta remember, I am long-term. I'm not a short-term guy. When I worked for big firms like Smith Barney and Prudential, you know what they had me do? Write my 30-page report, my annual report, put it under the client's Christmas tree so they could sit there over the holiday. And what does Ralph think of the next 12 months? Not the next 12 minutes, the next 12 months. And every week I had to update it with a weekly market letter. So I am geared that way. So I'm making a presentation. What you just heard is awesome because it's shorter term. Now I'm going to back it in to what we just heard, okay? But I sense something that I hadn't seen in years, ladies and gentlemen. When they took those stocks down five weeks ago, they hit them with a hammer. I haven't seen those charts look like this and all of a sudden look like that. The last time I saw that was in 2007 and eight. And the prior time before that was in August 4th, 1998. I was Mr. Bull, Dow 7,000, now 10,000. That's where I made my career, my reputation. In August 4th, 1998, I'm seeing them taking the market down. They were taking individual stocks out and shooting them. And I, I got on the call and I said, uh, I'm a cyclical bear. Cyclical with a C, meaning I think in the next couple of months we could be down 20%. The Dow dropped 300 points that, today, that day. The firm had to get me a bodyguard. People were so angry with me. And I couldn't tell them what was wrong. I didn't have an opinion. I didn't have a reason why I was watching all of this damage. And I took a lot of heat for about three, four weeks until guess what? Three weeks later, the Russian bond problem came up. And a week after that was long-term capital. And then the guys on television say, well, gee, I guess he was right. Guess I was right. The market tells you things, but it doesn't necessarily tell you why. I got this sick feeling, folks, that that decline that we had was the beginning of something bigger. Now, I'm going to show you some of my slides, but they're dated because we needed them here for the show. Uh, this work? Yeah, yeah, 
By the way, these slides were, I, I had to bring them, I had to give them to the money show people uh, last week, so they're not up to date. You're looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That was the decline on the right-hand side, the white line, okay? And if you look on the bottom, you see that little red with very oversold. So every technician, short-term, long-term, will tell you the market. I call it the beach ball anatomy analogy. You put a beach ball in the water, what happens when you let it go? It pops. And that was the rally that we had a week ago, that nice spirited rally. Remember one day we were up five points, 500 points? That's an oversold, you got to have it rally. No problem. What's going to happen is you're going to have a couple of days like today where you come down and hopefully test those lows, and those lows have to hold. And that's when we start back, uh, uh, backing into what Todd was talking about. He's talking about this for the next, what, until March, I think you said. This back and forth, this testing, holding the moving average, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's the good news I have for you tonight. It's a trading environment. Okay? That's the good news. Aren't you impressed? <laughs> I was told a long time ago, when in doubt, mumble. So I think the market, I think the market's going to control today for a while. I don't know what it's going to do tomorrow. But I'm not looking for new highs like that, folks. Too much technical damage done. And you know what it upsets me? I listen to these talking heads on television, Abe Maria, and they're trying to make an excuse why the market's doing what it's doing today. It's not today. What did it do when it started dropping there in October? You know, preceded that? There was deterioration all over the world. He was showing you a chart of EEM, emerging markets. I'm going to show you a chart of, of the DAX index, the biggest market in Europe. That looks like a disaster. <laughs> and it just started going down. You know, there were more stocks below the moving average before this was happening. Under the surface, there was an awful lot of deterioration. The secondary stocks were not making new highs when this was making new highs. More and more stocks were showing signs of something different. I can live with that, but not this body blow that we got two weeks ago, early, early in October. It's going to take a lot of time to repair the damage. Hopefully Todd's right and we go sideways until March. I'll give him that. I'll give you that. Next slide, please. This thing doesn't work. What is that? Oh, you're looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That's the line on top. Forget that. Look at the one on the bottom. That's a move, it's called MACD, a moving average. When they start turning down, this is long term. Notice the last time it did that was in 2014-15 uh, when we had that sideways movement. But I got to tell you, folks, that starts turning down, it's saying to me that we could probably have an extended period of correction. Hopefully, Todd's levels hold. I'm going to show you something now. Next slide, please. This is the Dow Jones Transportation Average. And I started my presentation telling you I'm an old dog that follows long-term stuff. And the oldest indicator, the oldest theory in technical analysis is Dow's theory. Charlie Dow was a newspaper reporter for the Wall Street Journal, the first one. In 1885, he comes out with his Dow Jones Industrial Average. And he wanted to know what the economy was doing because no economists in those days. So he created the Industrial Average and he had the Railroad Average. And he said, they're both mutually interdependent parts of the economy. If they're both making new highs, guess what? You're in a primary bull market. When they start going different directions, then you've got a correction coming. Well, guess what? Now, let me get the numbers here, because I haven't written down. Look at the October decline on the right-hand side, the, the white line on top. That decline took out all these lows. The lowest point was in February on the Dow, Dust, Dow Transport at 10,136.61. We went below that. So in that decline that scares me, we got a breakdown in half that old formula. What I don't want to see now, thanks. Sure. What I don't want to see now is the Dow Industrials do the same thing. I'll give you the number. Here is where Todd and I will, will part company. The March 23rd low for the Dow 
write this down, Dow Jones Industrial Average is 23,533.20. That's a closing price. Today it closed at 25,387. So you got a, you got a little room, you've got a little room. If, ladies and gentlemen, we get another rally here and we go sideways like Todd's talking, and if that ends and the industrials makes another new low, I will officially turn bearish. In fact, Dow theory, you never catch the first 10% going out. It was never meant to be a trading tool. And you never get the first 10% going back in. But you get 80% of the major move. So I humbly stand in front of you and say the market is in a secondary correction. And we're going to have this volatility just like he was talking about. I leave the door open. That thing makes another new low. I'm history. Uh, this is one of the better looking charts. That's the consumer staples, again, before uh, the decline today. But that, you can see it on the right hand side, the white line had an upward bias. So very defensive stocks like McDonald's and Disney and Coca-Cola in the last few days have been doing well. Uh, Pfizer, the drug company. But you know what? I want to say this. My wife would shoot me because she buys a lot of those stocks. They're boring. They're quality. But what's going down? Look at this. That's, this is the X, XLK. And again, this chart is a week old. The XLK, I looked at it today. It's at 67. It's very near its low of a, of a week or so ago. The XLK is very close to breaking down. Money's coming out of those big one decision stocks. You know where I saw something like this, uh, Todd? Was in 1971, 72, 73. It was called the Nifty 50, for those who remember. Money was concentrated in a handful of stocks like Avon Products. Remember that one? <laughs> Avon Products were, and controlled data. Those were quality blue chip stocks. IBM and General Motors. And all the institutions owned them. And the rest of the market was going like this. What do you think? FANG stocks were doing in the last year or so. That's where the money is concentrated. They're getting nervous on that money. I don't think that selling in FANG is over. I think people have to get out of there if they want to take profits if they're getting nervous. What's this? Oh, it is my DAX. See the three lines? I don't want to get too technical. Let's call it head and shoulder top. That thing is so big. My God, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You look at that, you look at the emerging markets, you look at, I, I think this is a problem that's been going on way before the Dow peaked a couple of weeks ago. That I was telling you, from a long-term point of view, it isn't today that bothers me, it was what has been bothering me for the last couple of months. Something is happening out there. Smart money is liquidating. Now, we can list a whole bunch of what ifs. The tariff wars, the Fed. Oh, let me stop for a second. I don't have this picture. But you know what would be a good thing to do, Todd? Get the long-term history of rates. Started, starting in 1940, when I was born, 41. You got the rates down there. You know what rates were? It's just where they are today, one, two, three percent. In, in the late 40s, early 50s, and into the early 60s, guess what? There was a secular bull market, 15 years, in the, in the S&P, in the Dow, okay? You ready? When interest rates were going up, so did the market. And I get very upset when I hear everybody say, oh my God, rates are 3%. No, that's not the red line. The red line is 5%. Historically, the Dow peaked in 1966, a year before I came in the business, when, the S when interest rates went, finally went above 5% and stayed above 5%. So you're going to hear the talking heads on television say, well, the interest rates are causing all of that. It's the fear. But I don't think that's the major cause of it. It's perceived, perceived cause. But I think the market over time can still handle the volatility in rates and everything. 5% is my red line for rate. I did that on television. I, I don't know if anybody listened, but. Uh, another thing. How are we doing for time? How much? 
Eight minutes? Okay. What you're looking at here, um, this is not a political statement on my part, okay? No statement. But if, you had, if I had to compare Don, uh, President Trump to anybody, I, I'd like to compare him to Donald, Ronald Reagan because he was another outsider. Every president, Democrat or Republican, gets a honeymoon. No? Okay? All right, I didn't vote for the guy, but let's see what he can do in the market. Kind of goes up for a while. Every president, almost every president, whether Democrat or Republican, the market peaks either in the first year or early in the second year and goes down and has a bear market. Okay? Look at Reagan. See the shaded area? That's when he got elected. That was his honeymoon, that shaded box. The Dow went up 10% in six months. Oh, by the way, had a 24% decline the next year and a half. By the way, this bottom here was the beginning of another secular bull market from 82 to 2000, though. But before he got everything going, before everything kicked in for Reagan, he had a bear market, typical. Trump, on the other hand, this whole thing, even with this decline here, his, his honeymoon is still alive, so he's having the correction. And it's over, what, over just two years. And the percentage has been fantastic. Don't you think maybe historically he's overdue for some kind of a bear market? Maybe? Yeah. And this is his second year, so we've got to do it fast before the year ends. No, I'm only kidding. No, only kidding. Only kidding. Okay. I heard someone say the other day on television, well, you look at the presidential cycles. The first year, you get a little bit of a honeymoon, and then the second year, you get a bear market. Third year of all presidents, Democrat or Republican, is the best of all four years. And this fellow was on TV talking about 2019 being one big upside move based on presidential cycles. And I put the TV on mute. <laughs> I said, give me a break. If you're going to base your whole thing on that, uh, uh, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. So be careful what you're looking at. You know where it all boils down to? Trends and levels. He gave you levels. I just gave you a level. I'll tell you where I turn bearish. By the way, that Dow down to 23,000, whatever the number I gave you, that's only about 10%, 11%. Once you break that, then it unleashes another 10% or so. And I leave, I, I'm going I'm, I'm to leave you tonight with the door open that I think that's still possible. And it has nothing to do with the 602 point decline today. I think this is all part of the volatility we're in. So if you all are very short term, have a lot of fun because this is your kind of a market. Play it. Don't stay too long, okay? Put close stops and get out when you, when you have to, okay? How much time do I have left? A couple of minutes? Uh, can I show you something? Uh, I'll get off the topic a little bit. This is a picture of me and my best friend, Henry VIII. Henry VIII is an English mastiff. He's my buddy. He's three years old. He's just a puppy. He weighs 234 pounds. <laughs> Two years ago, don't ask, I live on a farm. I don't live on the farm, but I own a farm in Minnesota. My lovely wife has her own building. I have this building. And I said to her in late 2016, I said, you know, dear, I, I all spent my whole life making charts. I would like to make the largest hand-painted chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average in history and do it on the north. And she said, no. She said, no. I said, OK. Two days later, she came back. She said, well, I'm being a little bitchy. I said, yeah. But she was afraid, and rightly so, that I'd have every jerk in the world coming to see it, number one. And number two, I had problems. I was going to have to bolt numbers and things on the wall. I found a guy who made labels, plastic labels, and I tack them on the wall. See those red lines? This is called Rouse's first 50 years in Wall Street, 1967 to 2017. The red lines, seven recessions. You can see the presidents. There were 10 presidents, a little green Patches are there, are three events that happen each year. Uh, I have a 48-month moving average on it. <laughs> okay, i got to get technical. Uh, let me see if I have another. That's, uh, uh -oh. That's the chart going up. The Wall Street Journal called, and they said they wanted to do an article because they heard about it. I said, wait. 
When the Dow goes through 23,000, you can title the article, the market went through the roof. <laughs> and it did. It did. Yeah, it's cool. I love history. I have my nephew on the floor of the stock exchange, a long story, he's a specialist down there. And I called him up, I said, Jay, doesn't the stock exchange have old, any old banners or something I hang inside my barn? And this is what they sent me. Uh oh Look at this. This is the bicentennial banner from the New York Stock Exchange, 1792, 19, I had the real thing. Here I am in the middle of Minnesota, no one knows where I live, and all of a sudden I have some real stuff. And I see I have one last chart. See this one? When I had, I had the famous war room in Wall Street, 50 years ago, I was the computer. We had to do everything by hand. You guys have got it made. You sit there and you get real-time price in front of you. Ave Maria. We never could ever imagine anything like that. When we moved from, Minnesota, from New York to Minnesota 10 years ago, I went up into the attic and I found a box I hadn't opened in 25 years. In it were my charts from the war room. That's eight feet high, 22 feet long. Plotted every day. And, uh, and I had, 30 years ago, I had plant, uh, a presence of mind to laminate the charts. So I called my buddies in Wall Street. I had four walls like this. I said, hey, the war room's alive. One of the guys said to me, hey, bring that chart down you have of the Dow Jones Industrial, the transportation, you the bar charts with moving averages every day for, well, I don't know, like 15, 20 years. He said, bring it down to the museum in Wall Street. There's a museum called the Museum of Finance. So I brought it down, I'm laying it out on the floor, and the lady says, can I cut it? I said, I'll kill you. You cut my chart. I was walking out the door. She said, oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. And she made a backdrop for the, for the Dow Jones exhibit. I think it was his 160th birthday or something. Six months later, this lady calls me up, said, Mr. Akinpura, this is one of the most unique things we have in our collection. Would you donate it? I said, absolutely. Then she tells me, that little museum, are you ready for this, is part of the Smithsonian Institute. Yes. Thank you. That's a true story. Thanks. Thanks.